Hello, my friends of Tri-City Community Television. Welcome to our program on site, where we share really important information for you and your family. And today, my guest is Jennifer Bladerwick. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Judith. I'm so pleased to be here. Welcome to Nosaic. So it's important for the people in our community to understand why the school district is important mm -hmm. and what the school district is doing for their families and you as a trustee. So uh, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, what, what is a school trustee? And uh, it is very different than a lot of the educational systems that people may have grown up with. And in uh, British Columbia, we elect local officials very similar to the way that you'd elect a, like a mayor and council, and they govern the school district as a board. So for our community, what that means is that you have like a local voice uh, as an intermediary between you and the provincial government. And also uh, to hear appeals, um, say for like disciplinary things or like student appeals at the board level. But most of what we do, uh, legally, we're responsible for two things. Through the School Act, we're responsible for graduation rates and also a balanced budget. So graduation rates is enormous. It encompasses a huge amount of things and has a little bit more latitude. I think we're all familiar with what the idea of a balanced budget is, but uh, a school trustee's role in the community is to make sure that the things that are happening in schools and in the district are the ones that lead to kids having the best chance of success. Great. So talking about success in our children, a lot of parents, they really want the best school for them. They wanted yes. to choose what is not just in the city, like in the area. So mm -hmm. you, you cover three cities or yep. five cities in total. Yeah, so the three cities, uh, Port Moody, uh, Poco, uh, Coquitlam, and then the villages of Anmore and Belcara. So uh, some questions that parents have, and sometimes it's a, like, it's a process for me if I choose the best school in our Port Moody. Like my son was an IB student. Yeah. We live in Coquitlam, but he was able to go to Port Moody. But I know it's a process. It is. Um, that was a particular program, so it was a different protocol. But what is the protocol if a family wanted to send his child in a different, um, like, how do you say, catchment? Yes. Oh, yeah. So every school has an area around them called a catchment, and they draw a boundary around it to try and get um, the right number of students into the school. Because every school has a set number of classrooms, and so they can only have so many children in them. And so if you want to apply to go to a different school, it's called a cross-catchment application. So we organize it into two different sort of prior, three, three different priority levels. So the first is students who have an older sibling already attending the school. The second is kids who are in district, and the third is kids who are out of district. Because sometimes kids who are out of district want to attend, especially some of our special programs. So the, the applications go in, and then according to those three priority levels, they pull them as a lottery. Um, and they do that to make sure it's fair to all the parents, because um, one of the things we used to experience when we had like a first come, first serve, was that parents that had more resources got their applications in first. So if you were a parent that controlled their own schedule, for instance, you could be awake at five in the morning putting in a, an application or staying in line to get in. If you were a parent that had to work three jobs or you, know, you had night shift, then you couldn't be available for those things. So now we have an application period, parents put in their applications for their child, and then we draw them randomly. What is that application time? Like when is the drop make it usually? Is, is two times a year, once a year? Yeah. So there's, uh, there is an application process. There's actually, if you go search SD43 cross catchment application, it will take you right to the page and you can go take a look because there's two different application processes. One for kindergarten students who have never been in school before and the other one for students who are like grade one to 12. They to yeah, 12. Because yes. kindies need a little bit more uh, care. We've never seen them in the system before. We don't know what their needs are. We don't even know what their names are of and course. what their address is. Yes. So we need more information about them than we do about, say, a student we've already seen before or who has been in another school previously. Wow. Now, um, sometimes parents are concerned, you know? Yeah. Uh, Vancouver especially have a lot of uh, demanding for international students. Yes. And is that misconception about 
why that school is receiving more international students and yeah. what about the space for my son or to be really well attended from the teacher? Yes. Can you, what will be the approach from the school district uh, in that sense? So this is, this is a tough one and I'm really glad that you've asked this honest question because I think sometimes people have very intense and, and uncomfortable feelings about this and they don't want to bring it up for fear that people are going to react negatively to just asking the question. So the school district plans for international students in schools where we have lower enrollment. So I'm going to use an example of Glen Eagle. So Glen Eagle is in an area that has traditionally had lower enrollment for a long time. And so they would have a lower population than some of our other schools. One of the big things, you, you want um, secondary schools to have a population, if you can, of about you know, over, over 800. Because if you do that, when you have kids in grades 9 to 12, you can have a larger variety of classes. If you have a smaller school, you're mm -hmm. going to really struggle with offering kids a variety of classes. So you would only be able to offer them things like English, math, chemistry, biology, important classes that they need to graduate. But you won't be able to offer them things like law 12, psychology, journalism, you know, art in, in a, like a wider variety. So when we accept international students, we deliberately, we place them into schools that have a lower enrollment. So because those students are there, there's a wider variety of classes available mm. to the students who are attending. And the, the international students pay a considerable fee to attend school. It's true that they pay three times more than our regular students. And it's really important, that part that you mentioned, that you place them in the schools that they have lower population so they can have more programs. Yeah, so it's really important to uh, think of students. Now, the way we get funded in British Columbia for students is, and I don't want to get into too many of the details, but in elementary school, students get funded as a block. So every student qualifies for, uh, say, like $7,900 worth of funding and then maybe some additional funding if they have some support needs that the government uh, supplies extra grants for. Federal government or provincial government? Only provincial. So okay. in, in Canada's system, uh, education is a provincial responsibility. Provincial responsibility. Yes, unless okay. it intersects with Indigenous students and then the federal government does provide some funding or for students who are um, using, uh, are doing French immersion and then they do provide some small uh, funding Amount. per student. Yeah. Now, the, the, the educational system and curriculum are the same in all the province, or they are, are different? So every province controls their own educational system. They do tend to be very similar because Canada is an evidence-based practice nation. So it means that like Canada looks at research and says, what's the best? And then they try and do that. So they tend to be similar across. There's differences, for instance, in Quebec. And, uh, and in the way they administer them in Ontario, and the prairies have a slightly different system. But in most uh, Canadian provinces, you'll see like uh, every province chopped up into school districts that kind of are the local area, and then the district is responsible for the schools that are within that area. And then the funding largely will come from the provincial government, and it's mostly funded by taxes. The big difference in education actually isn't across the provinces, it's through time. So, Right before I started going to school when I was a kid, um, it used to be funded every district would do its own taxes. So they would levy a tax on the people who lived there and then that was what would pay for education. But of course that meant that if you lived in an area that had a lot of money, your schools were better of course, yes, than an area that was struggling. An advantage there. Yeah. So one of the shifts that was made over time was to change from that system to levying the entire province. So now education is paid out of general revenues. So you pay income tax in the province, you pay sales tax, it all goes into the revenues, and then students receive like a block grant. So every student qualifies for $7,900 worth of funding, and so it means that every student in the province is equal. So it doesn't matter if you live in a rich area or a poor area. Or a big yeah. city or, or a big, small city, yeah. and, the and actually, installations are the same yes. and they had the same opportunity. That yeah. is really Absolutely. Good. So there's definitely some uh, you know, gaps in different communities. So some of the northern communities, they receive an additional grant for special geographic features because maybe you know, it takes three hours to get a student to school. So they receive like additional funds to sort of support those like local conditions. So it's a benefit for us to have 
international students oh, have been. Oh, absolutely. And, and, the, and I'd like to sort of explain it that, you know, the local students, if we average out the amount they receive per student, and then plus any uh, monies that they might receive for special grants, works out to about $10,000 per child. But an international student, their family will pay about $16,500. Good. So they fund additional teachers. Without some of those international students, we would be down teachers. One out of every 10 teachers in the Tri-Cities is paid for by international students. So it's so good that we have this information so yeah. that means uh, like misunderstanding about yeah. international students taking the space, space of the children. From and, the and we know that the research shows that um, students who attend school with students from other countries who've been trained in other educational systems, yes. both sides benefit. So the kids learn more about what it's like to be a student or a child in another place. And they also sometimes... Japan, Korea. Yes. Uh, and uh, Spain, actually. Spain. Argentina is another country we receive a lot of students from. Uh, and, and they get to learn about, and it's not just about culture, it's also about, um, you know, the way they teach things in other countries. So Japan and China and Argentina and Spain and Britain and Germany teach math and science differently than we do. And so having kids in the class where they have learned a different way to think is really beneficial to our kids. Really good point. Yeah. And uh, Jennifer, let me to congratulate you. Oh, you, you already went to be a school trustee. Congratulations for that. <laughs> yes. And also, you accomplished a big, a big successful. Oh. Uh, <laughs> tell me about it. Like yesterday. So yesterday, you received a yeah. diploma. Well, I haven't received it yet. Oh. I, the process is long, but I finally submitted my final, final uh, version of my master's uh, for educational leadership. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's I, good that we had uh, like this level of woman in helping our community with that master. Oh, <laughs> you're very kind. Yes. Uh, it, was, it was a journey, but uh, my master's was really beneficial to me um, in really understanding, I think, educational philosophy. Um, I have um, taught before, but never at the K to 12 level. And I think understanding why and how people think about education and the cutting edge research was really important to me in, in I think, feeling that I was doing the best at my job. And something that also I like it, and that's why I vote for you, is because oh. you also are really family oriented. You have oh, five children. I do, yes, I have five children. Um, and so I have a range of ages, right? My oldest now is away in college, and my youngest ones are still in school. But it's uh, a real opportunity to see, like, a huge profile of what's happening in the community and education because you know I'm sure you know right you you go you take your kids to hockey and soccer and, and guides basketball and basketball yeah. and you you meet uh, people and have a chance to talk to them about what's happening in their life and when your kids are young and older you meet a big variety of families and the challenges that they're going through so uh, especially in the last three years there hasn't been as many <laughs> Of to course, meet people. Of but now that the pandemic um, restrictions are changing, uh, it definitely has been an opportunity to go out in the community again and uh, remember what other people's faces look like. I would like to invite you again uh, for oh. the summertime to come. And oh. I have another topic to ask you for the next program. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judith. And congratulations for um, being that professional oh. and also just a woman that is really willing to give the time to get involved in our community in several communities so thank you jennifer thank you judith and to you my friends uh, from osai thank you for being with us hope this information from our school district help you to choose what to do with your children and how to receive international students in our community take care love to all of you thank you